Welcome to this second video, Climate Change Impacts, Mitigation, and Adaptation. This is the second video in the Climate Change Series. I'm Aida Awad from Broward College. Our learning targets for this video will be to analyze the major impacts of climate change and to differentiate between climate change mitigation and adaptation efforts. I want to call your attention, first of all, to this picture. We see a before and after picture here, one from 1883 showing a glacial front coming down mountains in Alaska, and the same shot from 2013. And I think you can clearly see how much this glacier has melted back. Impacts of climate change include things like sea level rise. And for sea level rise, we don't really need that much ice melting. In fact, ocean water absorbs heat from the warming atmosphere, and as it does, it expands. Half of the sea level rise is due to the thermal expansion of seawater. Yes, it's true that the loss of ice from glaciers, polar ice caps, Greenland, increases the influx of meltwater into the oceans, and that sea levels rose 10 to 20 centimeters in the 20th century, but there's an estimated rise of 20 to 50 centimeters additional by 2100. Let's look at some data here from NASA Goddard Flight Space Center. In the year from about 1990 through till about 2016, we've seen a rate of change of about 3.41 millimeters per year in sea level. So here is the zero line. Prior to about 1996, sea level was actually below the average. And now, since 1996, we've seen a steady increase in sea level to today's location. Further data comes from precipitation patterns, which are being disrupted. In fact, precipitation pattern shifts impact crop yields and food supplies. They cause floods in some areas while causing droughts in others. In the top diagram, we can see the average precipitation compared between the years 1986 to 2005 on the left and the year's projections for 2081 to 2100 on the right. The zero mark is here in the middle. Anything that's in a green or a blue color would indicate an increase in precipitation in that region. Anything that's in a tan or a brown color would indicate a decrease in precipitation in that region. So we can see that the patterns change from past years through to the future, and they don't change regularly across the globe. In the bottom diagram, we can see how that might play out in terms of crop yields between now and the year 2050. So as you might expect, green is good here. Go, go. Lots of crops growing. And you can see few areas indicated in green where we're expecting an increase in crop yields. But in the red, we're expecting decreases in crop yields. So think about where populations are increasing the most and think about how that pattern might play out in terms of food supplies. Further evidence of the impacts of climate change come from ice. First of all, glacial ice and ice sheets are melting at accelerated rates, and that meltwater can actually lubricate the bottom of the ice, which increases the rate that it flows, which causes some of that ice to move towards warmer areas where it melts more rapidly. And we're seeing evidence of that in the cumulative mean thickness change graph here. So from the year 1955 up to the year 2005, you can see a steady decline until about 1995 when the decline increased. The slope became steeper here. In terms of sea ice, we're seeing declines in both multi-year ice and first-year ice. And you can see the graph here indicating the extent of sea ice in September. So September is a key time because it's the end of the melting season in the Arctic. So this would be minimum sea ice values. If you look at the outline of the red area, that's the 1980 extent of sea ice, and compare that to the dramatic reduction in 2012. Turning now to talking about ecosystems and how they have been impacted by climate change. In fact, NASA researchers predict that at least 30% of land not covered by ice or deserts will see a change in plant cover, leading to animals having to relocate. And that impact on populations includes things like declines in Antarctic silverfish and krill, declines in frog populations, coral reef leaching, ocean acidification, and that impacts the entire marine food web. They also have impacts on human health, things like heat-related illnesses and deaths, and disease-curing organisms that are becoming more dominant. In the diagram up at the top, you see a map here that shows the ecological sensitivity for particular regions. These are predictions for the 21st century. Notice that 
areas that are colored in orange and red have a likelihood of 80 to 100 percent that there will be some ecolo ecological impact from climate change. Turning now to think about what we're doing about this. So uh, focus is on reducing carbon dioxide emissions here. And the term mitigation is heard commonly. And that term means that we are trying to limit the magnitude of global climate change by taking measures that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. In the diagram on the right side here, you can see opportunities to reduce carbon emissions in the power sector. Adaptation is a planned response to changes caused by global climate change. In the diagram down here at the bottom, you can see the building of a seawall that might help to protect against sea level rise. I think we're ready to look back over our learning targets. We were planning to analyze the major impacts of climate change and differentiate between climate change mitigation and adaptation efforts. Go ahead and take your mastery check quiz and I'll see you in class.